It really is a construction of Rembrandt's imagination. If there was an anatomical lesson, they would not have started with the arm, they would have started with the torso, and they would have cut out the belly first, because those are the organs that decay fastest. So we would not have seen this picture at all. In fact, we would not have seen these men standing around in this way either. They would have been in a theater uh, that was in the round that was about 200 to 300 people. Um, they would have all been standing over the railings and shouting and, and arguing. So in fact, the whole picture is a work of fiction created by Rembrandt um, to create a kind of harmony and, and to tell a story that he wants to tell. For years, debates about accuracy also surrounded Rembrandt's anatomized arm. But the important point about choosing to focus on the arm is that Rembrandt and Tulp were making a statement. If I straighten the finger out here, we can see the muscle, the tendon of the muscle moving. So if you can imagine, if you have an inflammatory... Problem. The arm had been an object of fascination for both the ancient physician Galen and his 16th century successor, Vesalius. Well, the choice for the dissection of the forearm was clearly not Rembrandt's, but most probably Tulp's, because Tulp followed the example of, his, of the great physician of the 16th century, Andreas Vesalius. In his book, Vesalius had himself portrayed with a dissected forearm, and he named it the most important instrument for a doctor. So in adopting this iconography in the anatomy lesson of Dr. Tulp, Mr. Tulp um, shows himself as the new or reborn Vesalius, in a way. Now if we move slightly more distally, we come across this square-shaped structure here, and these tendons are popping out. The hand was the instrument of instruments. It was regarded as the most divine thing. And Galen said this is a wonderful piece of natural engineering. Choosing the hand has got all that riding on it. It relates to Galen, it relates to Vesalius, and it relates to Tulp's own interests in what makes the human being divine. So Rembrandt's an amazing artist. He's one of the people who can create these layers of meaning. Rembrandt Harmazen van Rijn was born in Leiden in 1606. He arrived in Amsterdam when he was in his early 20s, and set up a studio. With 100,000 inhabitants, Amsterdam was the largest city in the Dutch Republic, 